and you're the interviewee, but I've also, the roles have been reversed. So um, everything I do, whether I'm running a group or um, hanging out with a friend, having an ice cream, or talking to a stranger on a plane, it's this ability to, this remembrance that I'm not um, whatever I'm doing, that there's a sense of a gap, and that's been really, really important for me. But that's only one of many, many things. Many things. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you've been doing a lot of the meditations in Pune. Mm. Yeah. Here in the West, people often look at meditation as calming the mind, for it's become much more popular, but that's the way people often look at it. What, what's for you the essence, the essence of meditation and the way Osho worked with it? Well, my experience and what I've heard Osho say many times is that you can't calm the mind. And the mind is, well, for example, I carry this around with me, this um, snowstorm. The mind is a thought-producing factory or a perpetual snowstorm. It's like always active. And to try and calm it is simply trying to make something passive that's by nature active. It's, it's a futile attempt. And not only that, but you get into a fight with it. Um, meditation is finding different ways to let the mind settle. Yes, um, in a way that's not antagonistic. Now, the traditional way of meditating was to the Buddhist method of Vipassana, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. was to watch this activity, to breathe your way, using the breath as a sort of a focal point, to let the mind just settle of its own accord. And that was fine 2,000 years ago over 2,000 years ago now when Buddha was alive because society, the people's way of living was a lot less complex than ours yeah, is. Less mental. Yeah. Less mental, exactly. People weren't so sophisticated and they were more physical. They were out chopping the wood or hunting animals or tilling the land. Um, so those two factors really um, had an important part in people's psyche because they were able to sit at will and just go inside. But most of us, if we try that, we just find as soon as we close our eyes, there's just 101 thoughts going on in the mind, like, I shouldn't really be doing this, I've got to do that, <gasps> what about that phone call, I've got to remember to pick up my laundry, or just, you know, this is self-indulgent, oh, I'm not getting anywhere, um, or, oh, God, my back's aching now, and, or scratching. So there's a restlessness in the body and the mind. And that's why Osho's approach to meditation is so unique because he endorses Buddha's method. In fact, he calls mm -hmm. it the essential meditation. It's beautiful. It, it couldn't be more simple. But modern man, contemporary man, is different from um, the man that was around Buddha. So in Osho's understanding, modern man needs to Rather than try and quell this chaos by simply watching the breath, which can in fact be repressive, mm. pushing it down, mm. he says your mind wants to think or your heart wants to freak out, do it. Just like really exaggerate it. So, so his state, there's the methods of breathing which really stimulates the mind and the heart and catharsis and jumping up and down. And then after those few stages of activity, in the fourth stage, when it's called the stop stage, Everything is so spent, you're physically and mentally and emotionally so spent that all you want to do is be absolutely still. So silence comes about through a, just the polar opposite, through immense activity and totality of effort. Do you still do the active meditations or do you, did you settle more in doing the quiet ones now? Um, I'm experimenting a lot. I created a website www.activemeditation.com because I totally, just a few years ago, all over again, 30 years later, fell in love with dynamic meditation. I had the idea to take it to yoga centers in the States um, because as I understand, though yoga is, is beautiful and a great discipline for the body, it can also be repressive. So I wanted to introduce the uh, active meditations, particularly dynamic, which is the most radical, as a as a complementary uh, discipline. 
Uh, so I began looking at everything Osho had said on dynamic and saw again how extraordinarily scientific and pragmatic Osho is in his approach. It's an extraordinary method, very strong. So uh, when I was compiling that website, and I do invite people to visit it, it's both in um, English and Italian mm -hmm. at the moment, everything you could possibly want to know about dynamic, including where it's being practiced in um, government, in the sports world, in education, in prisons, all sorts of areas where meditation is now being introduced. During that time I was doing dynamic again so that um, I would stay in touch with what um, I was researching. Uh, I often experiment. Right now I'm using a method called the alpha technique which, the, which is to get in contact with the alpha wave by first of all counting your in-breath then the out-breath then dropping counting and just watching and then even just dropping watching and just being and uh, that's a wonderful technique yeah. but I also use uh, techniques when I'm traveling because I'm moving a lot and this is why this is also part of my um, particular interest in meditation is meditation in everyday life because certainly dynamic needs an hour out of yeah. your routine yeah. which needs modern man needs it yes and, but yeah. a lot of us don't have that the luxury of time so the book like this meditation for busy people by Osho has lots of what says stress beating strategies to calm your life um, all my groups really revolve around this idea that unless meditation impacts your life why would you bother with it so uh, I use these sort of strategies um, in the groups and for myself for example I say when I'm traveling um, for example if I'm in a train instead of just staring out at the landscape which is actually tiring takes your energy I do a technique called double pointed awareness which is as I look out at the sheep or the rolling Tuscan hills or whatever not only am I aware of looking out but I'm imagining that they're looking back at me and in this way I create a circle of energy so that the energy that was going out comes back again and not only does it mean I'm not tired whereas before I was throwing out energy the energy is coming back but it also creates what's called a centering in me meaning let me put it like this usually when we're walking down the street and we're looking into shops and we're looking at people and we're looking at cars we're very out there our energy is getting dissipated in a way out there and through this technique it's a way and we lose ourselves out there we forget ourselves we're just involved in the world and it's fine to be in the world we have to be in the world but one can be in the world without losing oneself so centering is maintaining this awareness of your space inside, your stillness, your silence inside and relating from that that place. I use this little little figure from Japan to illustrate what I mean by centering. Centering, the Japanese say that the seat of consciousness is not in the mind as we Westerners tend to think but it's in the hara which martial art people will know is just below the belly button and when you have your awareness in the hara as I'm doing now as I'm talking to you I'm mm -hmm. feeling centered in my hara you have a sort of an anchor if you like an internal anchor so that whatever happens outside all the ups and downs of your emotional life or your love life or whatever 